takes notice. And so we come to today's text. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, everybody's favorite word, obeyed. My children love it. Are you working hard on your obedience so that you're shining bright with Christ's radiance? He's going to get to that in just a moment. You know, we remain on the earth to shine for him, not for us. What Paul's saying is that the church that works hard at its obedience will shine in its brilliance before the world. And so he's, he's, he's reminding them of, look, this is how this is going to work itself out. And you know, our beliefs always show up in our behavior. Have you noticed that? If you want to know what somebody really, really believes, Start journaling their behavior. Do your children believe that they should obey you? All I gotta do, all you have to do is observe their behavior and you can find out if they just, if they really believe it or if it's just head knowledge. Yeah, I know I'm supposed to obey you, but <laughs> well, we're no different with our Heavenly Father. Beliefs always show up in behavior. If it's not showing up in our behavior, then we must be honest with ourselves and say, I really don't believe it. It is for me just head knowledge. I can parrot back the right answer, but I don't believe it. And the way we know that is it's not showing up in our lifestyle. And so I think a question that we need to ask ourselves today is, do we believe that the gospel is the most important message in the universe? Do we really, I mean, this is gut check time, really, at the core of our being, believe that to be true? Because either we believe it, or we don't. And our behavior will give us away. See, what Paul is doing here is he is tying this to verse 8 of chapter 2. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death. So he hasn't changed his tune at all. It's still, Jesus is still our example. He wants their obedience to follow Christ's obedience so that their radiance will follow Christ's. It's, similar, it's a similar idea that we find in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 3, which says, Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. Lots of sobering words. Writers of Hebrews saying, look, you haven't resisted to the point of shedding your own blood yet, so there's room for growth. <laughs> Isn't that encouraging? <laughs> and so obedience should be the same so that as we struggle and suffer and strive for the gospel to the point where we're willing to go to the length that Christ did and shed his own blood for the message. Now we're starting to get it. And so he gives them this command. Verse 12, therefore, so everything he's been saying up to this point, therefore, my beloved, as you've always obeyed, so now not only in my presence, much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. There's the command. But if we just try to apply the command without understanding the truth behind it, we're going to struggle. We're going to struggle a lot. 
Verse 13 is the truth. For it is God who works in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. It'd be easier for the Philippians to go, well, that's nice, Paul, but you're in prison. <laughs> How are we supposed to do this? Paul quickly reminds him, God's with you. The fact that I'm in prison and might lose my life here is irrelevant. It doesn't change the spiritual, biblical truth that God resides in you as a result of what Jesus did on that cross. You have him with you all the time. You have his passions and you have his power at your disposal 24 hours a day. That's what Paul's reminding him. And I don't know about you, but I need to be reminded of that regularly. Because I get off center from time to time. I'm probably the only one, I, I understand. But So he wants them to understand and remember God's presence with them. I hope that encourages you as it does me. The fact that the Spirit of God is at work in every Christian. And if you are a believer, the Spirit of God is at work in you. He is. Yeah. It's God's power. To do what? Verse 13. To will, two things, to will and to work. So, he puts his desires in you. He puts his power in you. I mean, just time out for a minute. Think what you would be like if that wasn't true. <laughs> if God's desires weren't warring against your desires... There wasn't any roadblocks there to slow that process down. It'd get pretty ugly really fast, wouldn't it? Some of us have been there. So work out the implications, he's saying, together of that command based on the truth that God has worked you. God's working, so you keep working. I know you're discouraged, Philippians. I know it's hard, Ministering where you're ministering in that Roman outpost, God's doing it. Don't forget, you can't do it in your own strength. God's doing it. 